for part three of the measure of a man. Uh, today we're going to be talking about being a provider based off of Dr. Miles Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe and uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes's five P's of manhood with my unique uh, adjustments and elaborations because I want to be clear on where I stand on it and the importance of having some universal understanding of what manhood is. We are sitting here now in the middle of a fundraiser for the work we do with young black males through the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative along with the uh, wraparound services that we provide to young black males ages 4 to 30 and beyond where we can. Um, it is important to understand that we have to properly socialize young black males into an idea of manhood, a principled measurement of manhood and the, to escape the vagueness and the ambiguity of this declaration of manhood without there being a specific and pro-social notion. And what I want to do is I want to encourage people who can see the need for what we do, uh, can appreciate the work that I've done for the past 30 years, and uh, specifically with Black Man Lee for the last 15, I want you to show some support and support the work we do. The way that you can give to what we do is in the description box. Now, while I'm going to be directing uh, my primary focus to men because I want to talk to you, I want to encourage you, I want to lift you, I want to challenge you. But I want women to pay very close attention to this because you need to be able to recognize uh, what a man is before you procreate with him, before you surrender or uh, uh, submit into him, before you connect and merge to, in, into this oneness with him. You need to understand what a man is and, 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 and how a man is measured. And because society has taught us and that, 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 the, that, the, that the man is a commodity. He has been commodified. It is solely based on what's in his bank account, what he can provide materially. And while he has to be a provider in the area of material substance, he's so much more, and the demands and the standards of manhood have to be measured based on the totality of the necessity of his presence. And I want to talk to that. Now, when we started this, I introduced you in part one to the five Ps, all five Ps. And I, I gave a short synopsis of each one. I talked about uh, being a protector. I talked about being a provider. I talked about being a promoter. I talked about being a priest. And I talked about being a prophet. Now, I, I made sure in those last two that we moved away from the religious idea of it and moved more into the spiritual notion of it because that's where the power lies. But I want to get to each one of these. So we've already came back in part two and we talked about the importance of being a protector and how in providing this protection and this security and this safe environment that we empower those that we have been called to cover our our women and our children and in doing so we give them permission to become and to operate in the fullness of who they are and we talked about that in great deal if you haven't watched it go back and watch it uh today this is part three we're going to talk about being a provider now when you talk about manhood one of the first thing that pops up is is he a provider you know we can go uh even if you're, you're talking from a, a, a religious perspective or a uh biblical perspective you can go and you can sit up and you can look in the new testament it says that a man that who, who does not provide for his own especially those in his household is worse than an infidel and we can elaborate and we can talk about that i did that in my first book the Invisible Father, reversing the curse of a father this generation years ago. And we could talk about that, but what, what I want to want to make clear is in talking about provision, we must understand that men are capable of being providers in more than one way. And I think that because we have commodified um, men, especially black men, we tend to measure them solely by their capacity to 
provide material substance and material provision. And while that's important, a man must have the ability to provide a covering, advice, counsel, leadership, uh, support, substance, uh, and so much more in so many different areas. He is a vital source of the substance. As a matter of fact, he is the primary source of the substance of all that is needed. He is the foundational prince. He's the foundational principal element of the family. And so while he needs to be able to buy a roof, he needs to be able to provide food, he needs to be able to provide clothing. He must also be able to provide leadership, uh, counsel, advice, and, and uh, a, a spiritual, emotional, and physical covering. He needs to be able to impart wisdom. He needs to be able to provide his children with a sense of identity and a, a, a strong, powerful self-image, which leads to strong self-esteem and self-confidence. It starts with him. While the nurturing and the teaching may come from the mother, the sense of identity is centered in the father. There's a reason why when a woman gets married, she takes on the last name primarily of the man because he is the source of identity. He is the center of the force. When a person doesn't know who they are, when there's a lack or of, of an identity or an identity crisis, it is impossible to move in the fullness and the power of who one is because one does not know what one should be doing. That's a problem in manhood. That's a problem in our children today. It's because men are absent. We need to understand the force and the power and the connectivity. We live in a world that devalues the man in 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 every way all you have to do is you have to all you have to do is look at in in the western culture mother's day and father's day look at what happens on mother's day and this isn't to take any shots at women i'm about loving and celebrating and honoring uh those who deserve to be honored at the fullness so this isn't about we're over honoring women and we're under honoring men look at mother's day and look at father's day now here's the thing if you look through history it was the flip. Not that the man was more important, but the role of the man was more appreciated and honored. The father was the center. The father was what everyone came to. The father was the true nature and identity and source. And see, that's the thing is, when you look at the Greek word Abba, we'll just talk about father. And see, father extends more than just those uh, that come from your loins. Men are to father their wives. Men are to become the replacement of the first father with their wives. They're supposed to be teachers. They're supposed to be nurturers. They're supposed to be protectors. They're supposed to be those things. So they're not simply someone to come in and mate with. They're someone to take on the role and re and, and move forward with the perpetuation of identity, uh, identical or similar values. And it's important that we understand that. You know, and so what happens if you look back and you look through uh ancient history, we find that first and foremost, romance did not enter into marriage until the 13th century. So the idea of being romantic and this emotional love, this, oh, I feel like this, wasn't a part of the process. It was about finding someone who had the characteristics of manhood, finding someone who had the characteristics of womanhood and making a commitment or a covenant with one another that you were going to come together and honor the covenant. And the covenant in most instances was made in some way in a spiritual nature for those who are Christians and and, 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 and part of or, or any Abrahamic faith or anything. Else. It was made before God. So in other words, there was a triangular covenant, the, the, the parallel covenant between man and woman, and then the upward covenant between both and God. And it was this covenant that bound the relationship, not the emotions or the feelings or the hypersensitivity to, oh my God, I feel like this when I'm around this person. That came later and it became a big thrust in how one approached it. Now I have to feel a certain way. The problem is when you deal with someone based off of your feelings, your dealings with that person becomes a vacillating, isolating, highly volatile movement because no one feels the same every day. I tell people all the time, I don't treat my wife based on how I feel. Now, if I did, she would be pretty, she would still be in pretty good shape. 
But there are those times where I'm just not feeling, and it doesn't always have to be with how I'm feeling. It's sometimes I'm just tired. Uh, you know, Jason Wilson, uh, brother, uh, uh, is, 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 is really starting to be exposed for the unbelievable powerful force he is in the community as a, a, an encourager and a challenger of men. Uh, and he, 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 he made a statement in an interview uh, that, that where he answered a question about something that he had said, where when a man tells you he's tired, believe him. And he said, he's speaking about, specifically about a man who's really truly exhibiting the, for, the forces and the characteristics of manhood. He said, when he tells you he's tired, believe him. Why? Because no matter how strong he is, see, the, the, the idea that a, that, that, that a man who is experiencing a, 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 a state of weakness is no longer a man is a problem within our culture because we tend to judge men when they admit their vulnerability. But the truth of the matter is nobody can be strong all the time. And he uses a very simplistic uh, physical uh, analogy to make his point. He said, you could take just a simple barbell. Most men who work out in a gym can, 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 can definitely bench more than the bar. And most of us can bench significantly more than the bar. But I can tell you what, if you take that bar and you put it out there and you say, just hold that until tomorrow, there's absolutely nobody who can do it. Why? Because you can take the strongest man and you can put a consistent pressure on him in a consistent area. And if it stays long enough without him being able to recover, without him being able to decompress, without him being able to find a way to release and recover, it will overwhelm him no matter how small it may seem. One of the biggest problems is men are being consumed by microaggressions and micro uh, uh, anti uh, progressive realities that are ha that are, that are coming into their worlds, and because they have nowhere to get decompress, where they have nowhere. To, so, in other words, he says, when when a man tells you that he's tired, believe him. Give him. And, and what what does that mean? In believing him, give him permission to take a break. Give him permission to step aside for a moment. Give him a permission to step back and say, I need a moment. Give him that permission to be in that moment of weakness where he needs to recover. We have to understand that. We have to understand that. But in doing all of this, we have to understand the importance of the man and why we're at where we're at. And I use a, a, a very common scripture that has been quoted in Christian churches for, for eons, and not very many people really truly grasp it. And you have to really sit down and you have to think. Now, again, we're talking about the importance of the father in the home, the importance of the husband in the home, the importance and the presence of a man in the home. And when I use the word man, I separate the word man from male. Male is your sexual orientation or who you are in, in, in gender. It's a male. But in a man, if I'm going to define man, then I define man as someone who is operating within a certain uh, spectrum of behavior and his characteristics reflect something specific. Now in different cultures and different situations and all this, you find different definitions, but I wanna sit up and say, if we are going to move forward as a people, there has to be a universal understanding of manhood. And I told you at first, he's got to be a protector. He's got to be a provider. He's got to be a promoter. That means he is literally supporting and, 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 and promoting and, 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 and encouraging those around him more than himself. In other words, his greatness isn't coming from how his family makes him look, but how he makes his family look. And, and, and that's important. Then you got to have a priest. The priest is the one who handles the spiritual forces in the home. The priest is the one that comes before God for his family. Not in that traditional sense of all of the emotional banner, but in the sense of understanding what's needed, what's necessary, and what must come from him. He is in front of God. God, inquiring of God and in, in, in consulting God and, 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 and imploring God for certain things in his home, regardless of what that faith is, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, whether it's Islam, regardless of what it is, there is a need to be before God and be a priest. There's a priesthood in manhood that isn't explored the way it should be, and we are losing because of it. But uh, there's this part where it says that, real simple, it says that, it, uh, I believe it's Malachi 4 and 6, and it says that I will turn the hearts of the children towards the fathers. And I should turn the hearts of the fathers toward the children and the hearts of the children towards the fathers. 
and and it says lest I come and I smite thee. And then what does that mean? If you actually break it down and you you you, you perform an exegetical exploration of what is being said in the original text, what you find is saying is that 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 in 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 the moment of restoration the way that restoration will be accomplished is i will turn the hearts of the fathers back towards the children and the hearts of the children towards the father now notice it doesn't mention mothers this isn't to diminish the role of the mother but it is to highlight the role of the father and the importance of the father he says lest i come and smite thee and put a curse on the land what is it saying anytime you start to see anytime you start to see a decline in the moral fiber of any nation, any tribe, any community, any race, when you start to see a moral decline, when you start to see a functional and socioeconomic decline, when you start to see a falling apart of society, it is directly connected to the absence and the functional uh, capacity of the male. And the man has to be present. When you start to see it, you can see clearly the, the impact of the man not being functionally present in the home. There's a reason why I have for years advocated for the restoration of the black family because the black family in and of itself is an institution and at the basis and the foundation of the black family is the black man. If you don't understand that, you're gonna get caught up and you're gonna get lost. See, uh, our sisters want to be recognized for all the extraordinary things that they are able to accomplish and do in their roles. And I want to be the first to acknowledge that these women are just unbelievably phenomenal. But what we tend to do in doing that is we tend to highlight how special the woman is and we lose sight about how forceful the man is. See, in one breath we're saying that the man needs to be a provider but not seeing the force and the unbelievable implications of his provision. See, we want to say that he needs to provide but we don't want to give importance to what he provides. You've got to be careful here. You want, you want him to be a protector, but you want to do it. You want him to do it in a way that says, sit there and be quiet and just be glad you're protecting. And then we want to hold him at great distress when he is unable to provide, unable to be a protector, or unwilling to be a protector, then we want to judge him with an unbelievable level of malice. The thing is, we have to understand that absolutely he's needed. See, if you, you actually search a man, his design and his, his natural responses, the thing will tell you how he's meant to perform. A man is, is good with being loved. He's good with being wanted. But if you search a man before he wants to be wanted and loved, he wants to be respected and needed. He needs to know there's a place for him that he absolutely is needed. Why? Because that gives him the stability of knowing because I'm needed. Emotion will not, emotional situations will not dismiss me from my role because I'm needed. And there's a level of respect that I, I require. Before, I mean, it's good to be loved and all that feeling stuff, but women need to be loved first. And obviously there are all these intersections and crosses where things are, but as a general rule, when you study humanity, when you study life, a woman is always searching a man's behavior to find out if he loves her. A man is searching a woman's behavior to see if he is being respected. Now, what am I getting said? So what we find out in Malachi 4 and 6 is that in the time of restoration, the, far, the hearts of the fathers must be turned towards the children and the heart of the children turned towards the fathers. It has to happen. Why? Because in this term father, there are some, 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 some designations that we don't do. See, the term in Hebrew is Abba. And there are so many variations of that in other, 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 other similar languages, but it's Abba. And what does it mean? It means the source. It means the sustainer. So in other words, there's a source and then there's a sustainer. In other words, the source is the place that it comes from, but there also must be a sustainer and a supporter. In other words, whatever a man sus 
uh, sources or creates or produces or releases, he must also be able to sustain and support. And, and, and if you look at it, the man is the giving force in the relationship. Look at the design of the man. The man is physically designed to give. The woman is physically designed to receive. The man is the giving force. The woman is the receiving force. The woman is the woman's power comes in what she receives and what she does with what she receives. If you careful, if you watch what happens, the woman is a spiritual incubator. If you give her something, it never ends up being what you gave her. It always ends up being multiplied, grown, and driven. But she's got to be given it in a proper environment. If if not, she will abort the vision. She will abort the dream. She will abort the the, the fetus. She will. You've got to provide an environment for a woman to be a woman. That that's the man's responsibility. When I see men complaining about women, I say, you don't understand manhood. See, the man is the source. The man is the giver. The, by, by nature, in physicality, in spirituality, he is the giver. He gives, and then what he gives is used by who he gives it to to accomplish things. We see things backwards. The provider. but he's providing more than money. And also, we better start understanding something else in true reality as a people. Provision is so much more than what he gives in material good or in money. In fact, there are some great providers out there who cannot pay all the bills. There's a need for two household incomes, but what is it? He's striving to be a full, all-in-one provider. He's striving, but he's doing so much in so many other areas that that one area of lapse can't be magnified because he's showing up in place. See, there's always places you can show up in. That it, As an athlete, the one thing that my trainers and my coaches used to always tell me, sometimes it's just not going to be there. But the effort can always be there. Sometimes if you're a basketball player, your shot is off. But your effort can be there. You can win with defense. You can win with steals. You can win with rebounding. You can win with some. If in, 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 Your effort is always kept. So number one is look at his effort and you'll see his love, ladies. Is he offering you excuses for what's not being done? Or can you see him saying, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm striving. I'm moving in a way that I can be everything you need me to be. And some of this stuff we're going to have to grow into together. But you should be able to see it in his effort each and every day. What is he waking up with and how is he doing and how is he moving? What am I getting? I'm trying to tell you. Don't let society cause you to diminish the value of somebody that's exceptional and extraordinary because his, he's lacking a zero in his bank account. Because I'm telling you, if a man truly desires to be a man and to be what he, he knows his woman needs, that zero is coming. The zero is coming. Because what you may not realize is you may be the force that produces the zero in the sense that he's going to pour into you. He's going to give you a space of protect, of, of, of safety and security and peace and love. He's going to give you a space where you can feel like you, you, you belong. He's going to give you a place. And in that, your spiritual womb is going to open up and receive his vision. And you're going to be that part of the equation that wasn't existing. There's a reason why we're both needed. You can never be greater as an individual than you are as a unit. Never. That's the thing you got to understand. You can never be great as an individual. That's what sinking and synergy is. That's what becoming one is. Becoming one is to bring all of his masculine force and all of your feminine energy and bring it in together and merge and become one. In doing that, you do what? You do what's called sinking of energy, or and it's known as synergy. What? It's a powerful force where it's a powerful reality where two forces come together and sync up for a common cause, and those forces together are 
stronger than they were as individuals and they accomplished something extraordinary. This is not about having somebody show up and do everything you ever wanted for someone to do for you in your life and you don't have anything to bring to the table. It's not about that. It's not about a man showing up and he's got a woman that's going to cook clean and do all this here, and all he does is come home from work and go hang out with the boys. It's not for somebody to take you shopping, ladies, and, and buy you everything you can possibly imagine. That's not provision. Provision is specifically associated with need and necessity. Is he feeding you and the kids? Is he keeping a roof over your house? Are the things that make it comfortable for you to be able to be who you are in that? All of the other stuff, is nothing wrong with it, but it's not a part of provision. That's a part of abundance, and that comes from a connectivity. There has to be something on the inside of both of you that are striving for that. But let me tell you something. Men, and I'm going to leave you with this. There should be something in you that wants to give that wants what you have sourced and created in the way of children, in the way of a marriage, in the way of your vision and your dream, that you've sourced it, it came from you. But are you sustaining it? Are you supporting it? See, whatever you release, you have to sustain. Whatever you release, you have to support. Whatever you release, it's your responsibility to hold. These are the things we're teaching young black males. We are socializing it into their psyche. We are, we are inculcating it into the deepest recesses of their subconscious. We are teaching them this is who you are. You cannot sit up and expect a young kid to grow up and to be something that he does not see modeled, that he has not been introduced to the principles, that he does not understand what is expected. He's going to move and he's going to... Uh, we, what we've been doing is we're allowing culture, we're allowing this. Uh, music, we're allowing a horrible education system all to socialize our young black males and we're expecting them to perform and be everything we need and we're wondering why they're turning in on the community, turning in on themselves, turning in on our daughters it's because we have not done our work that's what being provided. So the Measure of a Man series is going to continue. Uh, we've done uh, pr uh, Protector, and today is Provider. Tomorrow we'll move into Promoter. But what, it, what, what, what I want you to do is if you believe in the work we're doing, if you want to see growth and you want to see change, we need you to give. We need you to support this. This needs to be a national movement first. We need to have these type of of, of, of Infrastructure, social infrastructures within every community so that we are universally teaching young black males what it means to be a man. And we are bringing black men back into the home. And we are sustaining and, and, and supporting the things we release, we create, we produce. It is so important. And ladies, there's a bunch of things. There's going to be a whole series coming, but we're going to talk about what's going on with you two. We're going to talk about it, and we, 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 we're going to stop this blame game, and we're going to start owning our stuff, and we're going to start looking at the best way to improve a situation is not by pointing the finger, but by working on self. And when you work on self, what happens is the, those who don't measure up don't even become an issue. You don't give time to someone who is not in your space who is not in, your, in, 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 in the same level you are. And it, it, that's where a lot of problems begin. You're filling spaces with people who don't possess the capacity to hold that space together. But again, we're calling on you to do you know, your best to support what we're doing and get behind it. I'm gonna keep these series coming. Uh, tomorrow will be part four. And on that note, I am out of here.